Welcome back to my channel. I'm Derek Clamartin from CodeOpinion.com, and I'm going to give you my best interview question. Now, this could be applicable if you're the one asking the questions, as well as if you're the one that needs to answer this type of question, but it relates to what I think is my biggest gripe related to the software development community, which is taking a term or some concept and butchering it to the point where that term is meaningless. It doesn't mean at all what it was originally intended to. So you may be thinking, okay, great, but how does that relate to an interview question? Well, this interview question isn't some silly trivia or fizz buzz. This actually goes deeper in really understanding your knowledge base. I wanna thank Event Store for sponsoring this video. EventStoreDB has a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So my biggest gripe is actually called semantic diffusion. This is on Martin Fowler's Blicky. This goes back to 2006 when he wrote this. And semantic diffusion occurs when you have the word that is coined by a person or group, often with a pretty good definition, but then gets spread through the wider community in a way that weakens that definition. This weakening risks losing the definition entirely and with it, any usefulness to the term. If you've been in the industry long enough, you've experienced this. You can probably think of terms, concepts, things that you knew started out a particular way, but then over time now, over the last say five, 10 years, have completely lost all meaning to what that term is. Here are a few. A service. This is so ambiguous now, we don't even know what a service is. This could be something that you're writing in code that does something. It's okay, it's immediately, it's just a foo service. It's a something service. Everything is just a service. We are talking about something larger in terms of microservices, well, what's the size of a service? There's definitions that everybody probably has around that. If we're talking about more service-oriented architecture, well, that's gonna differ. So the issue here is that if I ask 100 different people to define what a service is, I'll likely come up with 100 different definitions. Another example of this that's probably the most relatable is REST. And you'll notice if you've watched any of my videos before, specifically around HTTP APIs, I say exactly that. I call them HTTP APIs. I don't try most times to use the term REST. Why is that? Because it's semantic diffusion. What started off as an idea, as a concept, which you can go read Roy Fielding's dissertation. You can actually read this, it's available. I'll have a link in the description. What it's turned into instead is the idea, what I call entity services built around CRUD, thinking about entities as resources and nouns and your HTTP methods, they're methods, not verbs. Um, that's how people define the kind of the relation to CRUD. But that's not it at all. That's just semantic diffusion unleashing what was an idea of something and that term being butchered and being taken over by really an HTTP API over JSON and CRUD. And then there tends to be a lot of dogma and bike shedding around, well, I'm supposed to be following the industry standard of doing a RESTful API and what does that look like? And I had this tweet that I posted from a screenshot of somebody saying that, okay, slash orders is good, but slash generate order is bad because that's not a noun. That's some type of action you're trying to perform. And being restful is based on entities and resources should be entities. That's not the case. A resource doesn't need to be an entity. It can be whatever you want a resource to be. So... I think the biggest issue with all this, what I'm trying to relay on this, is just the dogma, semantic diffusion of what you think is industry standard doesn't necessarily mean it is or that it's applicable and that it actually makes sense on what it's turned into. I'll give you one more example of this, DevOps. Now that term is interesting because it means different things to different people, usually in kind of two different camps. One group of people is really thinking about collaboration and removing that silo, the division between operations and how software ran and the developers that are creating that software. That's where some of this comes from. But then as time goes on and marketing and tooling comes available, and then there's this idea of, okay, well maybe it's related to tools, so DevOps tools, or I'm a DevOps developer and it's a title, it's kind of a job role. Are they both right? Kinda, but they just have different perspectives. This is pretty much my motto all the time, which is context is king. You need to understand the context of when you're using certain terms. So for example, are we talking a bat or are we talking about a bat? Which one are we talking about? We need to get specific. If I'm talking about a baseball bat, that kind of changes things. Unfortunately, it's conflating two different ideas with one term, but this goes on in our industry nonstop. Agile, 
CQRS, which I talk about a lot, and I hopefully have simplified that. But what does all of this relate to what I think is the best tip or question for an interview? And that's having a conversation about a topic. The topic could be a programming language, a tool, a framework, a concept, whatever the case may be, but something they feel like they have deep knowledge about. This is insightful for a couple of reasons. Generally, the first is that if you have deep level of understanding of something, you likely have a lot of real world experience with it. And with that comes a lot of pain usually. So you can oftentimes talk about a topic, like again, tool, idea, concept, whatever the case may be, when you talk about it, you can actually often give a lot of the pain points, the downsides, the trade-offs a lot better than if you have just superficial knowledge. Yes, you may really enjoy whatever that topic is or whatever you're relating to, but you'll be able to get into the nitty gritty about some of, like I said, the pain points, the trade-offs, the negatives. People can really focus on the negatives and that's really when you can understand if they have a deep knowledge of something. Now, how this relates to semantic diffusion is because you'll likely know the history, where something comes from, and it won't be blurry and it'll actually be very clear to you about the why, not the what. And that's really important is understanding the why behind something. You'll have a really strong grasp of why you're applying the tool, the concept, and again, all those pain points, but it will all be derived from the origin, how that came to be. You'll get out of that semantic diffusion because you'll be at kind of where the point of truth of where something happened to begin with. You usually do that on a journey of, of, of understanding, of getting into that tool, concept, whatever, where you start kind of backtracking to really kind of understand the origin and you get a deeper appreciation of why something exists in the first place. If you want to have conversations with other software developers about topics like this in software architecture and design, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server. The link's in the description on how to join. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.